Welcome back to the channel. I'm still at Henry's Barn on the uh, Ducati Media Day. And this afternoon, I'm gonna take out this red beauty, the Ferrari of the motorcycle world, it has to be said. So this is the latest 2024 Panigale. I've not ridden one of these. I think it's two years ago I rode one of these. I found it quite an uncomfortable road bike, to be honest, but Ducati have made some changes to this now. Softer throttle, less engine braking, have those changes made this more of a comfortable road machine? That's what I want to find out as part of this ride. So if you're interested in the Panigale, and let's be honest, who isn't, what's it like as a road bike now? So if that sounds of interest, grab yourself a cup of tea and drop C, roll the intro. So this is a Ducati media day, as I said, so it means sort of group rides. So we're not going to be able to fully test this machine in this environment. I mean, you can't fully test this machine on the road anyway, because, you know, 200 horsepower superbikes cannot be fully exploited on the UK roads. I mean, it's a very focused machine, this, but from what I've heard, you know, they've made this more user-friendly. So uh, that's really what I want to get out of this ride. Does this bike feel more user-friendly than it used to? Or does it feel exactly the same? <laughs> Is it still just an animal? You know, I think one of the biggest things and biggest changes over the version I last rode was the fact, you know, the electronics. It all comes back to the development of the electronics over the last few years, you know? And we're in sport mode. But let's see what the throttle response is like. It was quite an aggressive throttle on the one I tried before, quite choppy. Now let's see how refined the Patagali is in its latest guise. A 15 and a half thousand RPM red line. <laughs> 15 and a half thousand RPM red line. I rode the, uh, the V4S Street Fighter on track at Silverstone last year. I actually rode the V2 and, and the V4. So I'll put a link to that video up the top somewhere. But, you know, what, what amazed me with that machine was, is that revs, the revs you've got to play with on this, on this V4 motor is absolutely insane. Oh, this is feeling... Uh, I'm liking this already. The bars feel actually quite wide for a uh, sort of standard bike. Much wider than my GSX-R, for example. It's got much, much smaller bars, so they've sort of adopted that wide bar approach, you know, like racing bikes have. So you get a little bit more to, to give it a little bit more counter-steer. <laughs> but keeping this thing to legal speeds, I'm in second gear and I'm up, I'm doing the speed limit already. It does actually feel much more refined than what I remember it. I'm talking about the throttle response, the engine braking, that is quite nice now. I could never have lived with what it was like before on a sort of day-to-day -day basis or even a week-to-week -week basis just riding it at the weekend. That is much nicer. That's the new track dash in race mode. And it's all cut into little segments on the right, which tells you what your traction control is doing, what your wheelie control is doing, your Ducati SC, or Ducati slide control, engine braking, you can adjust all of that. Rear ABS is off, so I can back it into the corners. <laughs> and as those things do things, as those electronics intervene, it lights up and shows you how much they're intervening. Obviously you can't see that while you're riding, but if you've got a GoPro looking at the dash, you could go back and watch that. But yeah, it looks it's a fantastic layout, isn't it? Obviously fully electronic suspension as well. The ride is actually quite nice. I mean, even in this race mode, it's not too jarring. I mean, it's got the full Olin ZC2 suspension, and it's actually sprung reasonably well, I'd say. It's, it's not too aggressive. It's not hammering over all of the bumps. Oh, 
Oh, it doesn't sound good though. I was out on my H2 at the weekend, so you know I have ridden a sports bike recently, and it's definitely you have to become bike fit when you're riding sports bikes because of that extra weight, you know. But once you're used to them, I have to say you can get used to this position. Obviously, it helps if you're a bit younger as you get older. Sort of tucking yourself into this sort of race position it takes a little bit of getting used to. But it's not too bad. I think it's not too bad because you've got the width. The bars are quite wide. Even though I've got a fair amount of uh, weight on them, they're quite wide. So I don't, I don't, they're not too bad. And the pegs, they're high, but it's sort of quite spacious for my knees. Oh, look at this. beast it's a beast of a machine the pickup is impressive actually even in race mode the throttle's not ridiculously aggressive you can live with it I'm gonna put it back into sport though Jesus Wow <laughs> it's it is fast. The wheelie control is on four. Let's start the wheelie control back to one. What I love about this is how easy you can just play with all the settings on the fly. Really easy system to use with the two. I don't like how you've got to push this in to get into the menu. I hate that. I've always hated that. But to go up and down here and just see what you've got it all set to and to tune it. Really easy to use. beast. It's so on the nose. The way it turns into a corner because you're so on the nose. Wow, you've got so much feel and grip from the front tyre. That's incredible. What I really like about this is the riding position, as in the thin tank and the, the way your legs mould around the tank is very, very nice. The wide bars are also nice. Yeah, pretty, pretty spacious, even though it's extreme and there's quite a lot of weight on your wrist and the pegs are quite high, it feels spacious, so at least it's spacious and uncomfortable. <laughs> the engine is uh, its incredible. It's a marvel. It's a marvel of modern engineering the, ele the engine on this machine same with the electronics you know you know you can crack it open and you know it's got your back modern Ducati electronics I think are the best electronics out there the ones on the Ducatis I don't know if, it, if it's because it's the, the hardware I would imagine they all sort of use the same hardware mainly it's all sort of the Bosch systems isn't it I don't know if they go to the extra level when it comes to programming electronics. I think that's the difference. I think they go an extra mile when they actually come to set them up and program them and the features they let you do with them and they're all very easy to use as well. So, And these modern bikes, I mean bikes like this with over 200 horsepower, you know, they've got to be managed. And a couple of guys will ask me back there, you know, how does this compare to my H2? Sort of power-wise and feel-wise and bonkersness. The difference with this, it feels like it's being managed. I know I can crack the throttle on this as open as I like, and it will sort it out for me. I'm not going to end up in a hedge. This I'm very unlucky. On the H2, you know, it's a 2017 bike, so it's you know, a lot more rudimentary. Even though it's one of the first machines to have an IMU, 
and if the wheel comes up you know it manages the wheelie control but you've got to, you've got to eke that throttle in you know I can just crack this open and I you know I couldn't I couldn't even do that really on the H2 you've got to manage the throttle much more so I mean it's got more power the obviously the H2 is heavier you know this is way more agile you know this will out handle the H2 all day long but the H2 does handle quite well but it feels heavy it feels less flickable than this I mean this is quite impressive amount of the bottom end you know I have to say I'm impressed with the bottom end power this has got you know it absolutely romps but with the supercharger on the H2 and obviously with it tuned you've got a lot of a lot of pull but this is impressive <laughs> a bit of throttle wheels in the air what I love about this is the feel you get from the front end when you trail break it into a corner now that's probably due to the riding position where you've got you know a lot of weight over the front wheel but it's got a really nice feel from the brakes feel amazing and it's when you trail break it into the corner it's when it really excels I think It's a shame this ride has been, you know, very sedate. Because I'd really like to just open this up and see how it, you know, really push it around these corners. But that's litre bikes on the road these days, isn't it? You can't really do it. It's not socially acceptable. It's not legally acceptable. Which is a shame. <laughs> Suspension is also absolutely gorgeous. It's so plush so plush I mean even in the race modes and sport mode so plush even like the pothole streets it just glides over them that's really impressive uh, with the wheelie control dial down it, it starts to pick up the front wheel it is way more comfortable than I think the older bike I don't know why I don't know if they've changed the ergos on it have the ergos been changed maybe they've widened the bars out a little bit but it feels it doesn't feel too bad you know it feels like I could actually live with this I could live with this riding position I think yeah the pegs are high but it's, it's just the weight on your wrist is the only thing it's a shame it doesn't have cruise control because you could just bang the cruise control on now sit up a bit you know because that is, that is the only thing. Sports bikes, more than any other bikes, need cruise control because you need to be able to rest your wrists. So it's a shame they've not added that like the S1000RR. Why not, Ducati, why not just add cruise control? Then this doesn't have to be just a, a track-based machine. The only thing I think would put me off owning one now is just the heat. The heat from the engine. I mean, even today it's uh, 17 degrees and I'm getting that heat coming coming up through my legs now I can feel it through the seats I mean they've done some clever stuff with the cylinder de deactivation but it's still a hot bike there's a reason these are red Out doing that because it sounds so good. Now, even when the pace increases a bit, I mean, you're not even scratching the surface of the bike's potential. Now, not, not even scratching the surface of it. It really, you know, it really is completely wasted on the road. wheel comes up and it completely manages it oh it's so capable this bike you can just tell it's like come on let's go let's have some fun unleash me I can see why this bike one sports bike of the year last year if it was with the was it MCN or, or one of the one of the mags gave it sports bike of the year 
it's definitely improved for the model I rode a couple of years ago. Definitely. You know, this, this is just as a road bike. I mean, I'm talking what I've learned just riding it on the road. I'm actually finding it reasonably comfortable. I never thought I'd say that. I mean, it's been on there about an hour and a half. I'm actually finding it reasonably comfortable. <laughs> I mean, I thought my sports bike days were over, but you know what? After riding this, I never thought, you know, I was like, Panagali, not interested. Wouldn't have one given. <laughs> I've changed my mind now. This is amazing. If there was ever a, a phrase to describe this bike, I think it's an expensive toy. <laughs> I think that sums this bike up perfectly. An expensive toy. But oh, what a toy. But I hope you've enjoyed the video. So this is really just a very quick ride on this bike. If you like what you've seen, subscribe below. And I'll see you in the next one. Cheers, guys. Thank you.